YouTube, it's your boy, the Passport Bro Wingman, coming at you again with another YouTube video. And the title of this video, video is called, Let's Rob Passport Bros, they easy lick, says some crime syndicates in Colombia. And uh, the reason this came about was I was watching one of my, um, one of the other YouTubers that I watch, which is, his name is uh, Razor Rays. And he's a um, American that, you know, spends a lot of time in Cartagena, Colombia. And, um, you know, he brought up some um, some uh, articles about, you know, um, some people getting drugged in Cartagena. And then also there's a YouTuber named DC Rob. He talked about a, a crime syndicate in Medellin that had pretty much been um, pretty much. They sent a lot, a lot of girls out to go into dating apps, you know, uh, meet these guys at their you know Airbnbs and then drug their drinks and then robbed them of like, you know, everything they have in the Airbnbs. And so, um, you know, I thought it'd be a good video to kind of talk about safety as far as traveling and give you guys some different safety tips that I've used to stay safe in several different countries. And I've been to many different countries, um, including Brazil, Colombia, uh, Dominican Republic, Mexico, uh, Hungary, Ukraine, Thailand, um, and Cuba. And, uh, and I plan to visit more countries in general. And uh, I just... and. And in many of these countries, I've, I've never, I've only had one bad experience and I'm going to get into that, but I visited some of these countries, especially Colombia many times. I've been to Colombia probably now, I'm going to say about 12, 13 different times, have not had any issues, have visited various cities, including Medellin, uh, Bogota, Barranquilla, um, haven't had a chance yet to visit Cartagena, um, but I'm going to get into that. And so I just wanted to kind of talk about this article, the whole situation, and kind of tell you guys how you can kind of stay safe and talk about my experience. So um, pretty much what happened in um, Medellin, there was a, a crime syndicate there that pretty much would have a gang of girls that would go into like the apps such as Tinder, um, you know, ba Badu, some of these other apps. And they pretty much would uh, act like they're very inter interested in some of the men. And then they would try to meet up with the men and, you know, and try to go back to their um, Airbnbs. And uh, pretty much from there, they'd party with them. They bring out drinks. They slip something in their drinks. Which is a, There's a drug called scoplamine. Um, they put scoplamine in the guy's drink. He drink it. Maybe like when, while he goes to the shower or he goes to the bathroom, they would slip it in his drink. When he comes back, he drinks it. He passes out. And then they pretty much would take the guy's stuff. And, and, and the thing about it is uh, scoplamine was used by the, I believe, the U.S. government as a truth serum. So a lot of times some of these guys are taking it. They're half conscious, half unconscious. And the girl is, try, is pretty much pressing him for, you know, the number to his um, to the safe in his room in his room so they can kind of, you know, get the money in cash, crypto, these kind of things. And so finally, shout out to the police there. They finally caught a lot of the people that were doing this, some of the girls, some of the the crime organizations, they brought them down, they've been arrested, and so hopefully they'll be prosecuted, and that'll at least bring some justice there to some of the victims, and also make things a little bit safer there, so, uh, so I kind of wanted to tell you some ways to kind of get around this, how to be safe, and then first off, um, at, you know, the thing is, currently right now, the way the climate is in Medellin, to me, it's a little bit unsafe, only because when COVID came through, it really destroyed the economy, and uh, a lot of people were left out of work. The president of Colombia raised taxes on the people there, and uh, as made and, and, and also inflation there has been has been really really high. So things there have been really really tough, and some people have gone into like survival mode. So in Colombia, you even see this on YouTube. There were um, <coughs> motorcycle games that gangs that would pull up on people, including foreigners, in broad daylight, rob them right in the restaurant, rob everybody there, then hop back on their motorcycle and then speed off. Um, and there's several videos of them doing this. Um, you have that going on. And then then also you have them, the, some of the girls trying to drug a lot of men there in, um, in Medellin. So, but let me say this. I don't want you to be fearful of traveling to Medellin or Colombia or any country such as Brazil, that kind of thing. Um, as long as you have street smart, you stay safe. For the most part, you know, you'll, you'll be okay. And I'm going to give you some tips in general, what you sh should do and some things to avoid. Uh, for example, um, I visited Medellin, some of these other countries. The only way I stay safe is this. And I've met girls off dating apps. So here's, here's the thing. Um, one of the first, first rules is this. Um, 
when you meet when you meet when you actually try to meet these girls in person make sure that you control the location do not do not when you set when you set up your first date and meeting place do not let them choose the spot do not let them choose the place to meet because there could actually be some men there waiting on you when you get in that area Sometimes the girls are giving you an address to a location that doesn't really exist. They're just trying to take you off to the middle of nowhere. Generally, what I do is at my hotel, I, um, I usually my hotel has a restaurant there. And I generally tell the girls, meet me at this restaurant here. Or maybe there's a restaurant nearby that I've already checked out. It feels safe, that kind of thing. And I generally meet the girls there. If they get suspicious, they act like they don't want to meet there or they can't meet there. I just move on. There's way, by the way, your life is more important than just going there for some dates with some girls. And I promise you, there is a, a, a large amount of more girls there that would date you where you don't have to engage in risky behavior. So that's number one. The other thing is, I, I generally stay in hotels. I, I don't really do the Airbnb thing. I've only done it now recently because I have an actual girlfriend there and I've been you know with her for a while now. So of course I trust her, that kind of thing. But even the Airbnb I have, they have a security staff there at the bottom and they make her and anyone that enters, they have to give their ID. The purpose of that is if someone was to happen, they can at least identify the person that, that did this crime. They can go after them and get you some type of justice. A lot of times when these guys are getting drugged, they're, they're going to Airbnbs where there's no security. So the girls feel emboldened to go into the person's apartment, drug his drink, um, you know, um, th that, that, that kind of thing. So that's why. So. And in many cases, they don't want to get caught because they want to repeat the process. So they're going to avoid places where they have to show ID. So um, not to say that no one can have a fake ID, but it does provide an extra level of security. So um, so so that so that's that. Um, yeah. Uh, and so um, other thing I do in general as well to stay safe in, in many countries is I actually have a secret wallet. Um, it's a little wallet that attaches to your belt. and You, you put it down into your your um, into your jeans and I keep um, most of my money. If I am taking extra money, I keep I keep an extra amount of um, bills in there, and um, and I have a copy of my passport. I don't take my passport with me because if someone steals it, get robbed or something like that, it's gonna be really really hard to get back on an airplane. So I would advise you not to take your passports out. Keep it in a safe in your um, in your hotel or Airbnb. Do not take that out. Only take maybe a copy of it. And then I have my driver's license. So if they so if the police do need an ID, I have something, but it's not my passport. I can always fly back into the state, give me another driver's license, even though it's DMV is terrible. But um, it's a lot that that way. Because put, put it this way, it's going to be a lot of issues if you try to get on a plane back home. You don't have your passport, so you don't want to do that. Um, and also, as I, as I said before, in my wallet, my real wallet, I only keep about maybe about um because they have pesos there in Colombia maybe about let's say like twenty thousand thirty thousand pesos keep in mind because I know some people are thinking about isn't, pesos are not like dollars they they do theirs in thousands we do ours in dollars so um I believe now about four thousand pesos is one dollar so I keep about maybe thirty pesos in my wallet and I keep like a um like my old college ID I try to make I try to paint up the wallet so if someone ever does rob me I just give them the fake wallet they get away with like like say that's about ten dollars and my fake college ID mean my meanwhile my real wallet I have stored to the side protecting me that kind of thing so I advise you to do the same thing keep yourself very protected keep your head on a swivel and plus that protects me because sometimes you're in areas where it's very very crowded there's lots of pickpockets you would be surprised how easy how good some of these people are at pickpocketing there's been cases where guys have had um you know um, like candy trays and they pretty much just bump into you and they use their two fingers to go down in your wallet, pull out your phone, have your phone under the, the candy tray. You don't even see it. You walk off. They walk off with your phone, which is why I, I, I don't really bring my I keep my phone in, in the hotel as well. What I what I have is an old phone that I used to use. You know, a lot of times you get a new phone, you just transfer with another. I bring like an old phone I have that has like the translator on it. I just use that. But I, I don't I don't. The only time I really bring my phone is if I go out somewhere very far and I'm going to need to use an Uber. But even then, I, I'm I'm very I'm always checking my pockets. Anytime I walk by a bunch of people, I check my pockets, make sure that um you know I still have everything intact. No one's running off with my stuff. Um, so I, I advise you to do the same. Only take what you need for the day. So in case if you did for whatever reason get robbed, it won't be that much. They won't have your passport. They won't have your bank card. That kind of thing. If you need to take your bank card again, your bank card um or some other important document. 
Keep it in your secret wallet. That's, that's the best way to do it. So um, I'm going to say that. And then, um, like I said, the other thing I do is, as I tell you before, I, I don't drink around the girls, especially if it's a girl I just met. When Sometimes they ask, are you going to drink anything? Nope, I'll drink water. And even with my water, I, I watch my glass. I never let it move when the girl is there. If I happen to walk off, I'm drinking. A, I'm not even drinking that water anymore. I'm not taking any risks. Your life is not worth it. They may feel some way that you don't want to drink with them or drink that, but you need to survive. You need to survive. Remember, at the end of the day, although these women are beautiful, they're still strangers. You don't know them. Please stay safe. Um, so, um, and, and in general, I always generally stay within a radius of my hotel, generally within the tourist area. I'm not traveling out on these little uh, small villages or places where the locals are. I tend to stay around where there's tourists, where there's somewhat some people that speak English. I don't venture off and be adventurous and go down, you know, um, you know, these, these little um these little side streets and stuff like that. I always if if I do have to walk away from the tourist area, I'm always in an area where there's lots of people walking around. There's lots of crowds and I'm among the crowd. So I'm not just because a lot of times these um, crime syndicates, they're looking for easy opportunities. They're looking for you to wander off on the side street by yourself. No one to help you. They're looking for those kind of things. So um, and in general, in, in Medellin, as I said right now, they, they had an issue with the scopolamine. You need to worry about that. Also, um, there are motorcycle gangs that generally what they do is they drive by on their motorcycle. They hop off. They ride you. They grab your stuff. They jump back on a motorcycle and then they speed through traffic. Be very aware of, of groups of motorcycles driving down the street. When you see that, be very, very cautious. I don't want to scare you, but you need to keep your head on a swivel. Not just in Colombia, Brazil, uh, Mexico, anywhere in South America or even overseas in general. Um, as you know, even in America, whether you're in New York, you're in Miami, you're in Los Angeles, you see some of the crime there, you know, there's good areas and there's rough areas. So you need to be very, you so do not leave your street smarts when you leave the United States. Please, please be aware of your surroundings. I'm going to say that. Now, um, as far as cities right now, if you did want to go to Colombia, I would say stay away from uh, Cartagena as of now because they just enforce a curfew because there was a lot of men being drugged there and I, and I told you the rules do not drink around the women if you do meet them you bring it back make sure your hotel airbnb has security they give their id if they say i don't have i don't have my id you just pass don't don't deal with them dating apps always you always control the situation you always are choosing a location where you meet also look out for motorcycles groups of motorcycles be very very cautious also, be very cautious of anybody you don't know walking close to you, walking, you know, walking near you, groups of people. Try to stay in areas, in my opinion, close to the tourist area. And uh, for the most part, in my opinion, you will be very, very safe, regardless if it's Colombia, Brazil, Thailand, any other country. I've only had one bad situation. And again, in a way it happened to me was I did not follow my rules. I did not follow my rules. I'm going to tell you that very briefly before I end the video, just to give you some context. Um, I actually was in Medellin, which now I would say because of the situation there is really, really bad. Um, actually I was coming out of my hotel. I was going to head to a club as I was about to get in a taxi, two girls approached me and they said, Hey, where you going? Uh, can we come with you? And I was like, I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to the club. You, you girls want to go? And they was like, well, no, we just want to hang out with you. Like, um, do you want to go get something to eat? And I was like, nah, I'm about to uh, head to the club. I was about to ask them for their, like, cause they seemed like they were very interested. So I was going to kind of, you know, speak to the girl that was talking and try to maybe get her number to come back to my place like later on um but i was like um i was like i'll probably have to catch up with y'all a little bit later because I, I really want to head to this club because it was getting late and i didn't want to be there when it's too late or whatever so it was like oh it was like oh um it was like um you don't want to take us you don't want to go anywhere with us and i was like no nah, i have somewhere to go and it was like well can you just at least help us get something to eat we haven't had anything to eat all day can you just give us maybe like 10 pesos you know uh i guess it'd be 10,000 mil pesos which is about three dollars can you just give us 10 10 pesos um at that time as i told you before i only take amount the amount of cash on me that i need so i had i already figured on my how much drinks were going to cost you know if i go to this club the taxi that kind of thing so i didn't want to dip into that that money so i was like well i don't have that much on me right now but um hold on right here I, i'm just gonna run to the eight and i shouldn't have said this this is this was stupid on my part i'm gonna run to the atm real quick i just gotta I'll just get a little something for you now and um, I'll get you your, you know, 10 pesos and we head out. The reason I didn't consider them a threat is because 
They probably they looked about like they were 21 years old. They were much shorter than me. I'm talking like four foot eleven, that kind of thing. They didn't. It was nobody around. It was just them. They were very cute, seemed very sweet. I didn't think that much of it. So I tried to go to the ATM. They somewhat followed behind. ATM was it was it didn't have any bills that day. So I went to another ATM. Same thing. It didn't have any bills. And that pretty much was probably God speaking to me. I, I didn't think about it at the time. So I was about to say, well, I'm sorry, I don't have anything. I'll have to catch up with you guys later. They was like, oh no, 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 no. We know about a we know about a ATM is right around the corner, it's right over here. I should have left when they said that, but I didn't really think anything about it. So as soon as we turned the corner, we started walking. And this is this is probably about like 9 p.m. It's dark out. So we we turn, we start walking about a block or two. I look around and it, it starts looking like less like the tourist area and more like the area where the locals are. And I start looking around. I'm like, oh shoot, I I probably need to go back. I, I start something started tingling in me. I was just about to turn around, and then somebody stuck a gun in my back. He stuck a gun in my back, and he was like, hey, um, I did something that I do not recommend you all to do. He stuck a gun in my back. I turned around and I looked, and then I just jetted. I I jetted and took off. I jetted and took off. Um, I, I jetted and took off. And uh, I was just running, 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 looking for like running down. I was in a, I didn't even know where I was. I was in a random area running around. Um, I was looking back to see if the guy was following me. He actually took off the other way. So here's the thing. As I was talking with the girls, when we were walking. We were using my translator. So right before the guy stuck the gun in my back, the girl had my phone and she was trying to type me something. And that's when I felt the gun. So I took off. So the girl still had my phone. So when I turned around as I was running, the guy turned around. He, he took off the opposite way. Um... I took off running. Eventually, I saw some police on a motorcycle and I waved them down. I was like, hey, hey, um, you know, some guy just tried to rob me or whatever. And he was like, what happened? What did they take? I was like, he took my phone. He, and he was just like, well, you just, you know, just block it. It's not that big of a deal. And I was like, you know, I was like, can you help me get a taxi or whatever? So then the girls came back. But I knew at this point that they had tried to set me up. So I was like, I was a little eerie of them. So I was there talking the whole time with the police trying to explain what happened. He couldn't really speak English, so we had to do a translator. The girls were walking, and then all of a sudden, this car pulled up. It was guys in there, and I'm assuming that these are probably some guys that were working with the girls because they they just stopped in the middle of the street. It makes no reason why they were even there. And they were just looking at me and talking to the police officer, and they were looking back and forth at each other, and they stood there for about a few minutes as I was standing there with the cops. The girls came. He questioned some of the girls. And then the guys in this car, they finally just drove off. At that point, a taxi pulled up. Um, you know, some of the girls were like, oh, you don't want to go with us? No. I, I ran, uh, ran to the taxi, got in a taxi, drove up out of there, drove up out of there. So, close to doing business, I lost my cell phone. But the good thing was I had insurance. I had insurance. So, I immediately called um t-mobile i let them know the situation they reimbursed me for my um phone i think i had to pay like a 50 dollar fee but they sent my phone to like my apartments so when i got back i was, I was getting my phone um i never saw those girls again didn't want to see them again but what what but think about the rules i broke um and there's a lot of rules in general well first off i went to an area as i said before that i didn't know about um away from the tourist area Again, these are strangers, so I'm telling you this. I don't care how cute or innocent the girl or person looks. Be very, very cautious. Be very cautious. It's not above the crime syndicates to use children to lure you to certain locations. And I mean children. It could be a, ch a child digging in a trash can, and, and then they walk up and you say, hey, can you give me something to eat? Why are you trying to give the kids some money, somebody come up behind you and rob you? You got to be very careful because in some parts, people are in survival mode. You got to be very, very careful. I don't want to scare you. So what I would recommend you do right now, if you do want to go to Colombia for this moment, avoid Medellin. Cartagena is dealing with a similar situation with the scoplamine. I would say go to some of the smaller cities, Barranquilla, Bogota, Santa Marta. Those kind of things. The only issue there is th those cities are not as built up as Medellin and Cartagena. Because Medellin and Cartagena are more for like the tourists, that kind of thing. These other cities are more so like vacation spots for like tourists. But I would recommend you do that for now until they clean up those situations. If you must, even better spot right now is Lima, Peru. I've, I've seen many videos about people living in Peru, especially from Brazil. Yes, right now is very, it's really, it's, it's very similar to Colombia. Very, very safe in Lima. I would encourage you to go there. 
and uh, I, I don't want to keep this video too long. I want to get it out to you. And please, please don't be scared to travel just because of this video. I just want you to be safe. As I told you before, that was the only instance I ever had. And that was, this is like maybe a decade ago, maybe a decade ago. And since then, I've traveled to Colombia probably about 10 different times, have not had any issues. I stick to my rules. I feel safe. And I've never had this issue in any other country. Please stay safe safe and until next time please subscribe to my channel hit the notification bell hit the thumbs up hit, hit the thumbs up um please leave comments tell me what you think and until next time this is the passport bro wingman signing off